the Jushits across the Indian. Your presence means a lot to us. Now, I take the immense privilege to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Sakaram Garale, who is currently the head of Southeast Asia Operations, ACMA, Accreditation Council for Medical Affairs. He is a physician at Lambda Therapeutic Research, Nicholas Piraman Limited. He was an assistant manager in clinical research at Glenmark Pharmaceuticals. He worked as a clinical investigator at Sandoz Pharmaceuticals and led a clinical team at Quintiles Research India Private Limited from 2008 to 2010. He served as a senior clinical operations manager for two years and a manager in global medical operations, emerging markets and Latin America at Abbott India Limited. He worked as a general manager in medical affairs, pharmacovigilance and public health at Milan Laboratories. And now he's an executive director, operations and strategy at Foreign Mobility. Above all, he's the founder and CEO of Renovare Healthcare Solutions which is a platform for building market access to pharmaceuticals, medical devices, nutraceuticals through medical communication, medical education, outcome solutions, medical research, regulatory support, and pharmacomaterial vigilance. The areas of exposure of Renovare include clinical trials, evidence generation, customized brand communication, customized disease and therapy communication, clinical practice guidelines, key opinion leaders engagement initiatives, patient education, continuous medical education, science-based digital marketing tools, and free course training. He has a significant knowledge of managing phase one to four, post-marketing observation studies, epidemiology, and IIS clinical trials. At an outset, he's a physician with management degree having 20 plus years of experience in healthcare industry. He worked with Indian and MNCs like Glenmark, Sandoz, Quintiles, Abbott, and Milan. He is a person who handled work portfolios like BABE facilities, clinical trials, global medical affairs, public health, pharmacovigilance, and medico marketing in 100 plus countries across globe. He is a well-known speaker and key opinion leader at various national and international healthcare conferences and seminars. He is a founder of three healthcare ventures. He is a sports person, trekker, wildlife photographer, and a life coach. He also collaborated with IPA education division and visited and guided many enthusiastic pharma students in career opportunities, especially in medical FIs, medical writing, medical transcribing in many colleges across Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. If you ask me, why should I pay attention to this session? I'll say three reasons. The first one is positive attitude. His positive vibes makes the students to think positively about future, which eventually will lead to success. The second one is clarity. He's very clear about what he's teaching and very clear about what he's talking. The third one is energy. Trust me guys, his energy will definitely blow your mind. We still remember the day when we had a continuous two hour session by him at our, at our institution. On behalf of Team IPASF, I promise you people, the next one hour is gonna be one of the best one hour in your life. All the viewers are requested to shoot their questions in the YouTube comment box. We will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer slot. With these few words and without any delay, I would like to call Dr. Sakaram Garale to take his session. Sir, now the session is yours. Over to you. Thank you. You people may not recognize me. I've changed a lot. <clears throat> Thank you, Rahmatullah. Thank it's you, Yogendra, the whole IPSF team. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to connect with you all. It's been two years. I had been, uh, you know, um, some of the other way connected with all of you. And I absolutely love you all and to be here. Thank you. Sir. And uh, I have uh, a slide deck of 40. And I know you all would have a lot of questions. So what I'm going to be doing is that I would be running through my slides because I want you all to ask me maximum questions. So that, uh, you know, if I am not personally touching you with your questions, then just a monologue would be a big waste of time because uh, I see myself in your, in your uh, footsteps and I see that if I'm listening to someone, give me knowledge, but also answer to me all my particular questions, okay? Sure. So 80 to 90% of all your questions I would be trying to cover in my presentation and remaining 10%, whatever is there, we will uh, take up during. And I do not have time limit if this is a paid session um, on Zoom, uh, then we have limitations. But if we can exp extend it for you all, I am there until I answer the last question. Okay, Thank don't worry. I'm you. not running anywhere. I'm sitting in my house. Okay, um, can you please put on the slides and we will start off. Okay. 
perfect <clears throat> next one so um <clears throat> i had been seek, speaking a lot uh, since i moved out and started on my own i had been meeting a lot of farm di community or i had met in last 2 years b farm m farm phds and all those who want to seek career in pharma industry uh, with the limited opportunities which have been communicated to them so since today's topic is uh, purely on internship that to on digital internship and then uh, a detailing on career ladder for uh for you all in the pharma industry so when you are in your third year when you are in a fourth year fifth year or in internship 10% of you or say 20% of you would have a visibility that what do they want to achieve what do they want to do in with their life so, you know majority i have seen is that uh, clinical pharmacy or clinical pharmacist you know in a, in a hospital is what probably you would be looking for so let's see a confusion i think uh, first 3 years probably you may not have any focus but maybe fourth or fifth year onwards you would start thinking that what i what do i want to do with my life my career and how do i want to shape it up so the first question which always pops up is what to do next after my graduation second is that we all have herd mentality you all all be having small groups five people 10 people you know 15 people small small groups in your colleges and all so you know one person says i want to do this there is a group always in a college which says no he is doing she is doing so i would also want to do that so herd mentality is one big uh, decision maker in case of in case of college uh, scenario when you have not decided if you have decided then you are pretty clear what you want to do with your life but if you are not decided you just follow someone else's path then uh, whether i should do any further education i should I, i should be going abroad or within india i should do any doctoral or post doctoral program or any masters as such that confusion is always there then i i i don't want to do spend few more years but i want to do job or i want to do a quick quick certification or quick course in something so what should i go for who would advise me and what is that i should invest my time into then there is a lot in every college i have good money i have good scores and i want to go to you know india canada or australia like going abroad is one big dream so again whether it's a reality or it's it's a confusion and a dilemma we will also try to answer it then do you have a defined career ladder you know majority of our you when i take sessions i ask people to plot a graph that you know how many years you see like your day zero or zero in your career is when you pass out and when you're almost on a give up your internship so after internship if the clock starts every 2 years where do you want to see yourself that i would be an executive an assistant a manager a senior manager and then your salary versus your ambitions which eventually control this career ladder we are going to discuss career ladder but do you actually in real sense know that what is a career ladder have you ever tried in a plot a graph or have you ever you know sat in solace or in isolation and thought what do i want to do with my life once i pass out where do i want to go the reason in the absence of a defined career ladder you you feed someone else's dream and you work for them and you just get carried away then now before career ladder once you are about to pass your internships are on what should we do should we go for on job training or should there be any internship or a mix of both and then a question eventually there are two things in your career one is your uh, your 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 uh, salary that what is your expectations on salary another one is would i be happy because happiness would not be a priority in the beginning when you start off but when you reach say my age in the middle age or you know you're beyond 40 that time um, a certain amount of money keeps flowing regularly april to april if you're working that salary would get increased but then a question haunts you i am married i have kids i have a good house i have a nice car i am working is this the satisfaction i am looking for because Six days, eight hours, or nine hours you are spending in office. Are you happy? That is the question you normally ask. So two questions would always remain, and they are integral part of this. That uh, 
whether money is making me happy whether my job is making me happy or it's both which is giving me a complete happiness when i am looking for but at this age probably this may not be a question for you you need a mentor or a guide which who will continuously be with you keep realigning your career ladder and say yes my dear son my dear you know mentee or xyz you are on a right track and uh, we should continue the way we are going and uh, i would always be there for you and we should continue this the same way and you always need our mythology says that you need a guru throughout you know it doesn't end when you end your college you need a guru for your personal issues you need a guru for your career planning you need a guru guru for your psychological support but nobody insists on it so i think it's a right time whatever age you may be it's never late so you find out a good mentor good guru for you who will guide you only if you don't know nobody is perfect we are not amir khan here that every movie is going to be hit so we have to ensure and you should candidly ac- accept the fact i am not perfect i need somebody to do my hand holding it could be your class teacher it could be your principal it could be your best friend it could be your father mother or any other teacher but you always need to have someone with the cases like what we have seen just 5 days back sushant singh rajput i don't want to go you need someone to open your heart out and ask for help it could be career it could be profession or anything you need someone next slide <clears throat> now what am i going to cover <clears throat> in my 40 slides that i think i'm going to give you a detailed overview that what is needed for you if you want to make a plan to go into pharma industry and uh, pick up uh, one option for your career in pharma industry so first i would like to give you on my couple of slides industry know how some of you may be aware but when i go and take full day sessions i see 70 to 80% or even 90% don't know what is pharma industry how what is there for you in the pharma industry what are the jobs lying there what what salary you start and there are no free lunches for anyone there is no option for hard work hard work hard work hard work education knowledge and a package the whole big package of this has to be continued throughout your life and then you stay and maintain your success ratio internship overview yes why internship which type of internship what exactly you need to do in internship we will discuss that then the career options what are the career options what one could think of in the pharma or i will club it that healthcare industry what is there for you then uh, the career ladder planning when i had spoken a lot but how does one plan a career ladder we will see that also couple of slides then you have decided you have gone for you know career ladder planning you want to do a course you want to do a post masters program you want to go abroad but then there are different sets additionally needed so in that it will be your soft skills i would touch upon on the soft skills a little bit and then how do you prepare for your interviews i normally take a full day session on soft skills and interview preparedness but then i thought since we have one hours time i should give you the importance and the crux of what is it next slide please <clears throat> so this section or this session we will talk about industry know how what is the industry where you are hunting for jobs outside the hospital or the clinical pharmacy setup where are the jobs lying and before you ask for a job you should know if i want to i want to swim in a lake before swimming and jumping i need to know length and width i need to know the depth i need to know the density is there a life guard sitting beside and then how frequently the water is been cleaned or is it chlorinated non chlorinated so before you ask for a job we need to know in which industry you are working and how the industry currently is shaped up or how is it going to move up in the next few years so let's see the industry now next slide <clears throat> so what i am going to be talking quickly in next four or five slides is the indian pharmaceutical industry how is the growth of industry projected or what is the trajectory of indian pharmaceutical industry's growth what are the top companies by sales and growth in india be it mncs be it indian what are the revenue projections projections of these companies that what are they currently earning what have they earned in the past where are they sitting now and how because if a company is growing they 
there would be more opportunities companies de growing flat or overall industry is not going there would not be as many job opportunities as one would ask and an insight or oversight on multinational pharmaceutical companies which are they what is is there any big news on that side and then we'll go ahead next slide please Um, until this slide is getting fixed, uh, I, you can fix frame. Is my <coughs> voice audible? The team on Zoom call, please correct me, stop me, and correct if the voice is breaking. I'm trying to be very clear and slow. Okay. Oh, clear clear now, now, okay. Do stop me, Raham and uh, Yogendra. Let me know. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, a quick overview of Indian pharmaceutical industry. Six, seven points I want to put here. The global contribution by, from Indian pharmaceutical industry is end dom domestic market size. then the export uh, of the pharma uh, you know products industry structure regulatory status and growth driver if you see the global contribution indian pharmaceutical industry accounts for about 2.4% of global pharma even much bigger by the terms of volume we are number 3 and uh, 14th largest by value so this big is and it is growing it is not coming down pharma industry is ever growing domestic market size the indian market pharma market is expected to grow at a cagr compound aggregated growth rate of 15.92 which is fastest in the world and uh, usd 6 billion in 2005 we have reached close to 50 billion this year barring what has happened in last 3 months which has slowed down the economy if you see the experts i mean exports of pharma industry indian expo india exports more to more than 200 countries globally our largest importer is africa then uh, middle east and latin american countries indian pharmaceutical exports amounts to close to 16 billion 16 for 9 billion in 2016 and it has been growing since then us alone accounts for 32% of imports or total exports from india which are going to go to us followed by us is africa and then europe so these are our biggest buyers as far as our finished products and you know apis are concerned If you see the industry structure, there are around three thousand pharma companies and about ten thousand manufacturing units in India. And uh, if you see the regulatory status, fourteen thousand WHO GMP approved manufacturing units across India, six hundred and five on the lower side US FDA approved outside US. Maximum number of US FDA approved plants. Then um, EU GMP six hundred plus compliant sites. and 1350 cep compliance sites and that this data is four year old 2016 so we have added four more years now what are the key drivers economic drivers for indian pharma industry economic prosperity improved drug affordability i think uh, with the free economy in last 20 years india has grown you know uh, sizeably i mean the purchasing powers the gross domestic products everything has got, gone up the poor class has become uh, upper uh, the middle class middle class has become upper middle class upper middle class has become a rich class and every house has got you know multiple earning sources uh, guards bikes farms number of homes so this has led to you know increased purchasing power and economic prosperity has improved the affordability put a drug in the market and um, the our laws are so stringent that you know the essential medicines are always been capped by nppa national pharma pricing authority and otherwise the drugs which are closely outside in india they are all controlled rising healthcare spending growth in the number of lifestyle diseases the growth in, in india 
is the leader in uh, diabetes i think the, they are called as gold mine of diabetes india has got largest number of patients here increase health insurance penetration beyond corporate uh, personal health insurance is also have gone up government pharma vision 2020 to make india a major hub if you have seen the stimulus package which is given last month it has got a largest or maximum provision in healthcare and pharma 100% fdi is allowed and an automatic so yeah, we have enough and enormous opportunities for pharma and healthcare industry to grow in coming times it has already grown and we will continue to grow next slide please now if you see the projections on uh, you know industry growth 2005 and 6 the industry was just 6 mil 6 billion or 5 billion and you see the way it has grown in last 15 years so it tells a story from uh, 10% compound aggregated row rate in 2000 you know 8 and 9 we have gone up to 17% as of uh, first quarter 2020 rising incomes enhanced medical insurance rise in prevalence and treatment of chronic diseases greater health insurance coverage and the infrastructure has gone up launches of patented product in india but it's not that it is affordable to you know in large scale indian population a certain section you have orphan drugs or patented drugs which are coming in and they have been sold at a at a hooping price but 95 to 98% of the indian market pharma market drugs are still affordable to common man next slide please now if you see q3 um, sales for uh, not q3 it's the 2020 sales for indian pharma companies in the quarter 3 of 2019 so you, i could close it for 2019 if you see the top indian companies sun pharma has been leading by sales and growth why am i putting this here is to don't go with the sales number we are seeing the last year's economic numbers for you to give an idea that which are the top 10 companies irrespective of mncs in india indian companies you should remember these names these are the companies probably you will have job opportunities line so if you see a mix of it sun pharma number one company in india by growth and by sales um abbott cipla cadilla lupin alkem torrent dr reddies and glenmark so if you see the sales percentage for growth sun pharma is almost 10% and uh, sales in crore 3000 crore in the quarter 3 of 2009 i mean i don't have numbers for quarter 4 or 2019 year they have closed then the then the next one is abbott then cipla cadilla and lupin you should at least remember these companies when you are hunting for jobs or when you have made up your mind next slide please now on the revenue and the, the projections of industry i have already spoken if you see left side of the slide on the corner pharma revenues have uh, you know grown from 6 billion in 2005 to almost 45 to 50 billion in you know 2020 that is the growth which we have seen with the cagr rate started from 10% to 16% it has gone up if you see pharma exports us is the largest importer or india exports to us then your africa then europe if you see revenue share of indian pharma companies if you break it up as per the type of drugs generic drug otcs and patented 72% of our market is that of generic drugs 19% is otc and merely 9% is patented drugs so you know our prices are still pretty much controlled and you should have a, a um, you know a, um, a good knowledge of how the market is shaped up and which type of drugs are in the market and what is the share of each of these type of drugs and if you see disease or therapy area wise what is the consumption or sale in the indian pharmaceutical segment by value then you have anti infectious then uh, which are your antimicrobials which are there then uh, you know cardiac gastrointestinal then women's health psychiatry then pain and analgesic and others so other segment is 34% in the remaining others is a cluster of everything every therapeutic area but in the remaining the largest consumption in india 17.8% is your um, uh, anti infective your antivirals antibacterials so microbial drugs and then followed by that is cardiac and gastrointestinal drugs so but this you know um, on a large perspective it remains the same but few drugs 
in few segments keep jumping and the percentage might go up up and down so we are now in last whole decade was a lifestyle diseases this decade which is coming we are entering would be more of uh, you know psychiatric elements which would be a, a, a large chunk of patients so depending up your lifestyle the kind of work we do our food we consume and uh, then the 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 disease portion or chunk and the medicines in all keeps changing next slide please and this is the top 10 uh, multinational companies which have their presence in offices in india as of 2019 if you see top 10 companies you should know last slide we saw a mix uh, of the companies in which only one foreign company was there which was abbott and other nine companies were indian so these are the mncs or multinational companies have their offices in india either they are us companies european companies or japanese companies they are they are having their offices presence in india they may not be leader the one earlier slide which i showed they are the sales and growth wise leaders in the indian market these companies also do have their presence their market share their volume their sales growth is different but may not be in top 10 but the culture the pay packages and the other opportunities to grow you get in multinationals is way way beyond what we see i am not trying to demean in indian company we have pros and cons of these companies we have pros and cons of yeah. indian companies also so if you see top 10 india multinational companies they are pfizer roche jnj sanofi merck novartis abv amgen gsk and bms so if one has to think that one day i should be working and sitting in any of these companies so you should be thinking of these 10 companies that indian companies are no doubt they are really good top 5 top 10 but if you have a choice and you want to be working with some companies then they should be these 10 companies preferably where one would like to make a career next slide please now let's go to the internship section i am i would rather love to take questions i just have parked few slides here to tell you about uh, you know what is internship and you know i am not covering digital assets because i would like to talk about it and you know give um, clear the myths and fact about internship digital internship physical internship everything so we would discuss couple of uh, jinx or myths facts about internship and uh, how does it help you next slide please so what would i like to show you here in my presentation why why should uh, i do an internship why is the, why why is the need to do an internship i mean is it a mandate or i can just go through it's okay i got a job and i'm moving ahead i don't need an internship or on job training whom to connect there is an internship but whom to connect how do i get an internship and how do i start working what are the available options that where can i get you know why whom and where <clears throat> then physical versus digital digital is been spoken in last three months not before that if it's an internship it should always be physical and the career impact that what if i do internship what is the change and what if i don't do internship what is the impact positive or negative in my career ladder next slide on this hold on hold on hold on go back go back now on this slide i purposely kept a picture that you know this is what is the crux or mota mota importance of doing an internship connect with industry leader improve your resume explore industry ethics present your findings in earn money earn money is the after effects of internship next slide now why <clears throat> why do i need to do internship i i would like to take questions but i'm just uh, you know on this slide only the important facts i want to put communication skill the way you are during your college and the way one is to, one is expecting you to be in the office when you start your job the first key thing is how you present yourself and what are your communication skill three written verbal and uh, written spoken and the listening skills also and how good you are at listening how good you are at speaking and how good you are at writing and presenting and if it has been taught in the college nothing like it if not you should groom and and internship gives you an opportunity to groom yourself with these initial set of communication skills pr being in college you would be only connected with the teachers or some pharma companies here and there little bit contacts and your friends but having good connects we have our times it wasn't there your time you have digital tools 
you can connect with big industry leaders, seek advice, seek guidance, and it should eventually lead to an internship in their office and a job in the office. Get in touch with who's who of the market. During internship, you get to meet people, you go to talk to them, you go to introduce to themselves, and you get a nice connection or build a relationship with that industry stakeholder if your internship is allowing you to do that. OGD, being in internship, you're working on actual job. If your internship platform allowing you to directly deal with clients, work on specific project, then that is your on-job training. Prepares you for real life experiences, directly joining a job, falling fall on face, face and learning with each and every step. Instead of that, you are on internship, you are always guarded by your mentor or the organization where you're reporting, your reporting manager. They always guard you, say, if you go wrong, he said, no, no, he's an intern, he's learning, he's supporting us. And that is your learning experience. And then cafeteria approach. Internship would open you for multiple things. And then it will make you or give you options that where you want to make your career. Because if you have still not made your career ladder, your internship is your opportunity, which would give you a, a thinking process. It will be initiated. It will tell you, I need to make a career in clinical pharmacy. I need to make a career in medical affairs. I need to make a career in marketing. I need to make a career in PV, make a career in clinical research. Because if you're not seen it, if you're not been there, how can you make a choice that it's good, it's bad, it's worse, or I don't want to stay there, or this is the best for me. For that, you need to have somebody sitting, giving you a cafeteria approach that there are multiple options. These are pros and cons. Okay, do one job on this, do one job on this, do one job. Job means during your internship, you're doing some work, which will give you hands-on experience that what is exactly needs to be done in clinical, what exactly needs to be done in medical affairs, what exactly needs to be done in pharmacovigilance, what exactly needs to be done in regulatory affairs. These all aspects would be clarified if your internship platform is exposing you to all these things, it will give you an idea that what is best for me in which I need to make my career. Next slide, please. Now, this one slide, uh, I actually took it from one of my intern who has presented it somewhere and I liked it. So it's, it's, it's always without internship, with internship, the comparison is knowledge versus logic. You have a knowledge, but you don't know where to apply. Internship would give you that platform. No, this was there in the books, but it doesn't work. You need to tweak it and you need to apply. Reading versus hands-on. You have read everything, but you don't know how to apply it. That hands-on experience to match with your reading is given. Assumptions versus reality. Being a student, you will assume, oh, it happens that way. It was written in the book or, you know, we did a practical on this. But versus in the reality, it may be completely different. So internship would expose you to assumptions versus reality. Hard work versus smart work. When during your OGD or internship, you will come to know that just a donkey work would not help. Time management, delivering the objects, uh, impact analysis, outcome evaluation, all these things would be taught to you when you're doing your internship, manual versus using tool. Everything cannot be donkey work. There are tools available, there are systems, there are processes. So how can we be more efficient using various tools and you know come in front of your seniors and increase your opportunities to grow, learn multiple things. So this is basic difference of doing internship and not doing internship, what the impact would be there. Next slide, please. Now, a, a straightforward, since I am a medical marketing or now a business consultant kind of a guy, if you talk purely that somebody wants to do an internship with in medical affairs, I do take every three months, uh, five people, they work with me and I ensure they are groomed on all the aspects. So what I practically do is this, that this is only the superficial stuff if somebody is doing internship in medical affairs, that you are involved in product evaluation, different companies, like some products are successful, some products are failing, some products are you know, in a plateau phase of the product life cycle. So normally <clears throat> when I have people with me, they're involved in product evaluation, portfolio assessment. I have products in cardiac and then there are five products, therapeutic area. We need to explore, find out more competitive scenarios and add few products or a company wants to explore into some other therapeutic area. So we, I normally involve interns in exploring literature search and giving them a different vision that this is how you, when you when you are in a pharma industry, you need to know who's purchasing, why they are purchasing, what is the patient being educated at, what a K oil uh, needs from you, what sign, kind of scientific data needs to be handed over, then uh, what kind of conferences they go on, uh, you know, 
participate, what kind of papers are being published, what are index journals, what are non-index journals. Then for a pharma industry, eventually they have to earn money. So you are part of pharma industry, so you have to support them. So what way you could contribute in a medical marketing side, the new products which are coming in the market, who are your close neck competitors and all. That's what is meant by portfolio assessment. KOL, physical engagement tools, that, you know, physician engagement tools. Key opinion leader is a doctor who's eventually prescribing your drugs for a pharma company when you're working. So how do you maintain a fantastic relationship with a doctor? This is what has been taught, not in detail, but at least you get to know that some of you may not be aware of what is KOL, but what are the different tactics a pharma company and a relationship with a doctor of different therapeutic areas, different specialties, so that somebody would be interested in pure academic knowledge, somebody who's interested in knowing your product, somebody would be interested in your price, proper product price, somebody is purely concerned about patient's benefit. So these are the different aspects on each and every aspect. <clears throat> medical affairs, along with medical marketing, connects with doctors and ensures they have a good, strong brand. Presentation and communication skills, business meetings, um, you get to travel uh, across India for different seminars, workshops, and meetings. Develop two or more research articles and protocol. When I work with people, I ensure that they write papers. They write good papers and they get published in if in, it's in index, if not in, in non-index journal, so that they feel confident that I'm writing something which is scientific. Remember, all farmed is your doctors. And uh, with the thesis and, and, and the final projects you're preparing, just don't do it for exam. Be a very good medical. It will help you to shape up your career afterwards. It gives you new dimensions uh, when you yourself are a good writer. So during internship, three months is too less a time to you know make an expert in everything. But at least you know all the aspects of these areas. Next one, please. Next slide. Now digital, why digital and what is digital? When you know internship, it's digital, physical, one and the same. Why everybody's talking about digital? Because one cannot go to each and every office and be present. We have limitations on movement because of Corona pandemic, restricted movements, restricted exposures. That is why we are, everybody's talking these days about digital. Same responsibilities, sitting at home, on your laptop, working every day, full day, and you're doing delivering all those things. Only needed if you have to be physical and the company calls you, then it could be a mix of digital, 90%, 10% physical. Currently, that is the only option available for most of us who wants to do internship in healthcare industry. This is the best utilization of time, doing nothing, sitting at home, or you're, you're, you have free time after your regular college internship, or uh, you don't have a job at uh, in hand once you're done with your internship. Just keep waiting and applying instead of that pick up an internship and start and get enrolled, start working and get the knowledge. When you have a knowledge, you're more confident to go and talk in an interview whenever you're going to go for interview. <clears throat> Exposure to digital tools. Digital internship would give you different tools like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, different softwares, app, how can you use for KOL engagement, uh, patient engagement, participation in meeting. Now I'm conducting most of the advisory board meetings for doctors are web advisory board meetings. So, you know, everybody's trying to get comfortable with these tools. So nobody's an expert. So that is what is like getting to know, finding new tools, getting to know and assessing is impact. Social media hygiene. All of us are on all the medias, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. But how are you branding yourself? That is very critical. That what kind of your actual and fake image you're trying to create there. And no, even though it's not a part of digital internship, but you, you're creating your own image. Nobody's seeing you in person. They are seeing you through these tools and they are closely watching you that how, what kind of opinions you put on Twitter, what kind of posts you have on Facebook, what kind of posts you have on Instagram, what kind of posts or write-ups you put on LinkedIn and what kind of population and, and the connections you are and how are you exploiting them? So if I have to hire somebody, I would check everything and I'll see if this is the best fit for me and I will go for it. All the top-notch companies, when you have, they hire you, they do a social hygiene check at all times. They don't want to hire a Hrithik Roshan, a good-looking person who otherwise on social media profile is a stalker or you know he's, he's a hit monger or something like that. Nobody wants to do that. Futuristic career opportunities for you uh, when you are in uh, digital mode, and you 
can think more innovative using the digital platform so this is what is i thought that might take on a hiring side what i would want in a digital internship what rather you should be willing to deliver when you think of it everything what you do on internship is just going digital and why digital because you cannot do it in person that's what is digital internship next one now could you please reduce the slide and go down yes now what is the career impact on the internship we already discussed in detail but just a quick run through you gain job skills you sharpen improve professional skills gain practical and pragmatic experience after you have had a rigorous internship valuable work experience potential and smooth transition into employment it's not new for you how to talk to employer your colleagues your friends your companions talk to bosses how to talk to clients you have gone through during your internship 3 months 6 months and you are like almost perfect resumes enhance you know how to write resumes what is expected by company and then then you got bet get better on your resume writing <clears throat> then what tools to mention in the resumes what is to be added do's and don'ts in resumes also known to you gain confidence when you have done it when you are done failed you have succeeded you have got confidence that you are not worried you know hands on experience is there i can easily do it explore a career path have to decide if you are confused before your internship an internship would rather put some light on in your mind and would tell you that you should pick up something which is being served in front of you the same cafeteria approach and last leadership and skill development happens during internship that how to talk to people how to lead a project how to do a reporting how to you know speak to clients overall you know make over to certain extent happens during internship next slide so i am done with the internship now and uh, i am going to go on the career options and uh, i would just run through all the career options which i think they are good for you we go to career ladder and probably we go to question answer i am purposely running because i being a teacher my first profession the moment you get an opportunity you keep talking and then with aging i have learned that i need to be fast this is a one hour session so career options section 3 go ahead next one let me start off uh, this is a typical pharma tree i normally project when i talk about career options and this is not my own i liked it it was searched and you know it is more relevant that is why i keep talking about uh, so if you see i i we would see it in details like uh, hang on ram ram hang on uh could you okay um the headers here these are the opportunities for you in a pharma or in a healthcare sectors we start from left hand side production and manufacturing formulation and development quality assurance quality control drug regulatory affairs pharmaceutical packaging industry research and development hospital pharmacy community pharmacy you guys are aware about r and d hospital pharmacy community pharmacy all other places it has not explored that is why it is not known but they these are the places where you also have opportunities for you to enter on the right hand side academics for sure teaching you can go marketing nobody goes but i always recommend please go you have good opportunities good packages do not limit yourself with a pharmd do a nice mba from a reputed institute and pharmd mba would be a deadly combination for you to go in a pharma company or healthcare industry you just need to find peace and happiness in what you do and money would follow government jobs there are exams which you need to give and uh, then there are various opportunities like drug inspectors drug controllers or in different offices you have opportunities for then uh, regulatory bodies you can get opportunities in various regulatory bodies you can have your own chemist shop you can go and start your own business then there are opportunities outside india higher studies you can do masters then uh, the other opportunities in different other like nuclear medicine nuclear pharmacy and there are n number of opportunities i have listed okay 
Uh, this career tree you will find it just google and you'll find it but i like it because i know people say no i am sitting at home what is there for me find out there are multiple opportunities you just need to be restless you need to be hard working you need to be humble i will tell you next one now what i am going to do i have 12 slides more quickly 30 seconds i'm going to finish and run now every field what is the job opportunity what you join as what is your salary and what are the growth opportunities in there so in medical affairs so medic when i talk about medical affairs it is both pharma nutraceutical medical devices okay in medical affairs pharmd is fairly new just two three years back it has been introduced so entry level medical kindly put the phone on mute <clears throat> so we have please put the phone on mute galaxy j8 Raham Yogendra. So one second, so one second. You can do as a host. Mute all. Okay, great. So, so you know, for medical affairs, since everybody, all families do ask me about medical affairs, so I say yes. We have a very good opportunity. So one role of in in a medical affairs is field based and one is in the office. They eventually grow together. So a field based based role is the one for which the farm Ds are normally hired. Almost ninety five percent of Indian and MNC companies hire them. Before farm D, it was MBBS and MD who used to join as the field based as well as office. currently office based. They hire MD pharmacologists. But in a field-based role, pharmacies are hired, and eventually they come to an office-based role. You join as an MSL, Medical Scientific Liaison, uh, Regional Medical Advisor, or Scientific Project Manager. These are the different names for one single role. A field-based medical advisor. What is your job? You connect with doctors. Clearly, a KOL connect. You talk science to a doctor. You have to have expertise on disease areas and your company products, and your subject subject matter expertise is purely field based okay your communication skill knowledge of disease knowledge of product because a doctor loves to talk with an another doctor either a farm mbbs md or a farmd which is having a good knowledge with the medical uh, rep or a sales rep of a pharma company he'll only talk about sales and other things previously everything was dealt by a sales rep since now doctors are coming so there are two sections a science part is spoken by an msl a commercial part is spoken by an advice uh, the sales rep ideally pharma companies you start with 20000 25000 some will you give you 30000 per month now growth field based role you will go grow two years three years as senior medical scientific liaison then um, you can go as an msl manager lead msl and head msl 10 years or 12 years down the line you will be a head msl Which is equivalent to a, a senior manager or a GM in a medical affairs. Okay, if you join you from an MSL, you say I want to come to office and I want to have an office based role. Then it will be advisors, then senior advisor, manager, senior manager, uh, general manager, and head of medical affairs. This is how you go. Okay, next slide, please. Now next is clinical research. Most of pharmacies also ask for clinical research. now two type of clinical research options one is the phase clinical trial another is the generic one bab studies so in the phase one or the phase you have everything phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 rwes your epidemiology studies patient registries or anything you talk about bab studies purely for generic drugs there are a lot of bab cro's across india 100 plus i would say and there also you have opportunities you have opportunities in proper clinical trials also what do you join as either you join as a cta or cra clinical trial assistant or clinical research associate or a site specialist site specialist is doctor location based guy a research associate is office based guy what is performing visits to a site monitoring for monitoring the clinical uh, uh, trials happening and a cta is office based but doing all the documentation work so documentation of field based activities every role is this is what you do you have to engage the investigators who are participating in trials perform monitoring visits you need to have you will be performing disease area specific studies job 
salaries would start indian companies from 17 18000 mncs would start 20000 it can go maximum up to 25000 your joining package growth a cra can go to senior cra lead cra manager cra senior manager and associate director and up same is for cta same is for site specialist okay this is how you can you cannot say i am a farm d i want to join as a manager ask nobody would hire you so you need to your academic knowledge is on one side your industrial knowledge on the other side next one please pharmac vigilance drug safety you join i am not going to repeat what we have started i'll just directly go through how you join what is the salary and what is the growth you join as a pv executive documentation work anywhere you go initially they want you to learn the system you will be handling icr that uh, and psur compilation data entry coding and reporting and filing this is what you do for pv salary starts with 18 to 20000 at the most 25000 what is a growth ladder from executive to specialist senior specialist manager and senior manager next slide please medical writing a lot of pharmacies either pick up clinical pharmacist medical affairs as an msl a medical writing pv so in medical writing what do you do you join as a trainee writer you do scientific and non scientific medical writing you have to do what you need to do you have to do literature sir nobody is going to start writing publication it doesn't happen because you would be either working for pharma company or working for a research scenario a cro so you would be involved in documentation and literature search you would be involved in data compilation and you will be involved in drafting the reports not finalizing it salary 20 to 25000 growth scientific writer 1 2 or senior writer lead writer and manager this is how you go next one now drug regulatory drug regulatory either in a cro setup or in a pharma company which will be pharma medical device or pharma nutraceutical you join as a ra executive research refer regulatory affairs executive uh, you can be either part of cmc or you can be part of hardcore submission related regulatory affairs what you need to do is documentation support here also query handling literature support supporting the queries salary would start somewhere around 20 25 again growth is senior executive specialist lead ra manager senior manager and head that is how you move ahead or indian companies have different ladder mncs have different ladders next one please now production and manufacturing i have not seen anybody opting but just i thought of sharing you rarely farm these i have seen you join as an executive technical expertise needed you are not a technical expertise here but you need to spend time you learn you grow and you correct high intensity work salaries might start between 18 to 22000 and the growth ladder would be senior executive lead manager senior manager in a production and manufacturing setup next one and this is again in a pharma device or nutraceutical sales and marketing now uh, um, i think along with farm d if you get a nice mba from a reputed institute you will be preferred to be hired in a sales or marketing role you join either it's sales it's either it's marketing you join as an executive either it will be field or office based job engaging assignments would be given one project one therapeutic area one product product strategies need to be decided brand plans to be created marketing plans created kol engagement tools so multiple but these all would have commercial incl inclination to it salaries would start 20000 to 22000 same ladder you will marketing executive to specialist manager senior manager gm and head of the department that's how it will go and on the right hand side which i have shown is how currently we all are into digital marketing so what a digital marketing tool and you know how do you engage doctors next one quality assurance and quality control any department in a pharma device or a nutraceutical setup you will have qaqc you join as a what is the job of qaqc they define make sops they measure the compliance they analyze the outputs they improve if something going wrong and they could put a control that is the qaqc qc team join as an executive course or certification additionally if you have which will tell you that you know you have done a qaqc kind of a course you have a preference of getting hired your job initial few years is not decision making it's purely documentation and you supports in audits inspections and all salary 18000 to 22000 and the career ladder is same you will go as you know initially executive senior executive then manager assistant manager manager senior manager gm and you will go up next one please 
Now, hospital and community pharmacy, you know better than me because you all have been taught and spoken. Clinical pharmacies, well-known job description, drug safety expert, salaries start from 18 to 20,000 depending upon which kind of hospital setup, how big corporate, non-corporate you're working. And ladder not defined because just five to six years people have entered. Now, how are they moving? Only time would say that what is the career ladder ahead. Next one. Academics. Some of you would like to join academics, be a teacher. You join as an assistant lecturer, tutor. Communication, teaching, clean, and knowledge. Knowledge uh, depth has to be there when you stand in front of 100, 200 students. Public speaking attitude and, and, and the skill set is must. Salaries 20, 25,000. And a very defined ladder, assistant lecturer, lecturer, AP professor, and then head of the department. That's how you go up. That's at least for medical, but pharmacy also it's the same. Next one. Government jobs also. A lot of you, if interested, very good opportunities. In just a, you are a graduate. I think I see a lot of text and you know associations of PharmD working on you know getting a recognition instead of that. Let's use it as our degree and you know. Um, go for government jobs. You have, you have enough opportunities there when you knock the door, when you hit it harder with the knowledge and right kind of uh, background of the examination you have cleared. Nobody is there to stop you. So government exams to qualify, drug inspectors, safety inspectors, quality manager. You are a subject matter expert in that. As per government grade, you get a salary. So it will start at 2025 20, and then sky is the limit with authority and money. Growth as per the government norms, the, the grade-wise policies are there. Next one, please. Now, let's see the career ladder planning, what to do and how to be. A lot of the times I have discussed in a lot of the platforms, some of you have already heard me when I had done the complete tour of South of 10, 15 days, personally met you and we have discussed it. But let's quickly touch upon what is more important when you talk about career ladder planning. Next slide, please. Now, what are the key pointers? I normally say, please spend time in silo and plot a graph that every year, every second year, six months. Now, when you're doing a college, there's nothing to do. You just finish it off. Now, when you're approaching your completion of fifth year or your internship, this is, or during your internship in the college or hospital, that is the time or just when one year in advance, you should start thinking what you want to do. One, when you have taken admission, you may not be mature enough that, you know, you know after your 12th, uh, when you have taken the admission, that may not be the time, maturity and resources to take a call. Now, after spending five years or one year of internship or during that time, you should. Now, if you don't know it, find a guy who will help you. It could be a mentor, a teacher, a friend, uh, uh, your father, mother who has an expertise or anybody who knows it. Uh, further education versus job versus business. This is always a call. Now, as per your career ladder, in line with your career ladder, whatever sings it, you have to pick it up. You want to take an education ahead, please take a call, decide, think pros and cons. And go. You want to make a, go for a job opportunity, are you going to go uh, get it immediately after? Do you need any additional certification courses to be done? Or you do you pick up a job which is coming in front of you. Just don't pick it up because you're getting good money. 20, 25,000 or 30,000, 40,000. Would you be happy doing the same job after two years, four years, five years? If you can assess it, go for it because you cannot keep jumping. Initial couple of years, it's fine. Two years, three years, you worked as a medical advisor, you didn't like it, you want to go to PV. Or you joined as a PV expert or PV executive, you didn't like it, you want to go into medical marketing. You joined clinical pharmacies, first five years is absolutely fine. You cannot take a call that 10 years you have spent and oh, I don't like it. I want to change and I want to go to No, you wasted the years then. There is a basic experience coming, but subject matter expertise would be gone. Find a mentor. I always advise everyone, please find a mentor. Ian, when you're confident that you can sail through all alone, nothing like it. But when 95 to 98% of us would need help at all time, all steps of life, nobody is God gifted that he would or she would never have a problem. You need somebody to you know, rely on for guidance, support, mentoring. Make a plan once finalized. You have done a career ladder, but you're just sitting on a nice career ladder. Two years, I want to be a four years manager, uh, six years senior manager, 10 years, I want to be a head of the department. But what are you taking, doing for it? You need to have a, a proper executable implementation plan that I, for first two years, when I, I would pick up a role, 
in a clinical pharmacy or i would pick up a role in medico marketing and then i would do a part time mba which will give me an idea of how should i cope up uh, shape up my career next two years while working i would have an expertise on this i would learn a foreign language i would also learn these digital tools and i would start showcasing my core job is going up and i am added this which i would keep exploring and implementing in my job so that my promotions and my further role ahead is getting boost i am just joining i have joined as an as, as an executive i am sitting there nobody is giving me promotion i am still an executive after 4 years 5 year that is not a properly planned career ladder you have to plan a career ladder with a properly backed up supplementary tools which will help you grow faster track the career ladder on annual frequency that every year check 31st of december sit alone and check did you achieve your personal and professional goals which you had planned for that year do not play a football with no goal post because then you will simply be running with a football no assessment there is no goal post and you'll get tired and you'll be lost and you will be kicked out of the game so a proper planning with timelines regular assessment and supplementation which will feed your career ladder is very very important upgrade as planned you don't have to be fixed on your career ladder if there is a positivity and agility needed which will push you faster go for it upgrade on a regular basis if there is a new course new knowledge base new thing is coming a new opportunity for your career ladder pops up update upgrade and move faster ongoing knowledge in any field you may be you have to be updated with the latest knowledge if you don't have latest knowledge and you're sitting that i was a farm did topper 4 years back i am still the boss boss you're out the person who has just average who has learned who has studied some foreign languages he knows some digital tools because your degree is only important for a first job if you are a topper you are topper for the first job after that it's your experience which counts if i am hiring a person after 5 years i'll say what have you done in 5 years i will not ask there were 10 subjects did you get distinction in everything 5 years but it's of no use for me for me you have to execute for which you have been called so you have to keep upgrading your knowledge at regular interval what is beneficial for you to grow fast next slide please so soft skills now two more sets and we are done that what are the skill set needed now when you are thinking of you know moving faster closer in the career ladder let's see them what are they next slide please now key key soft skills i i foresee one should have some of them you can develop during your college life some of them during internship or when you are actually doing and working so for you guys to start with job interview skills is the most urgent need which you should develop during your internship if you want to pick up a job communication skill yes in college if you are good in communicating your leadership skill you are participating different events you know the decency when you talk to girl you know the decency when you talk to your friends to teachers you have been presented your 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 image in a college or in front of the doctors in hospitals when you are doing that is what your cs communication skills then communication is all different platform for spoken written and presentation so presentation skill a lot of the students they are not good at you know powerpoint presentations or writing emails that is how you create your image this is the time you learn suddenly when you go on the job and then a person is exp exp uh, you know expecting your manager that you what is your presentation a presentation which has to be created in a day or 24 hours you take 10 days for it or when you come up with the content and the quality it is pathetic so this is the time you learn it team skills you cannot say i am boss i was a topper i would only drive it no once you are in a market you are in a fish market with sharks around they eat you with the corporate politics so whom to talk what to talk how much content to be given when i go in my job whom to trust and what kind of relations to build it's an art and you have to learn it so probably you got a good mentor during an internship he will teach you that what is to be spoken how to put on your clothes how to comb your hair what is to be spoken what to talk in front of client and how to take everyone with you as a team so that a common objective or deliverables are delivered time management must very important in a corporate scenario some you you are the best in something but it was expected in 5 days you take 50 days useless 
Now, if you want to, if you have to do something, you delivered on time. Quality is pathetic. So it has to be a right mix. Time management, keeping the quality intact, and delivering, satisfying the, all the stakeholders involved in that project or activity. Leadership skills. It doesn't come overnight, and it's not a born skill. You learn, you learn, you learn. You fail, you succeed. You fail, you succeed, and eventually you learn the, you know, knack of it. That what is meant by leadership, communication, team skill. Okay, these skills would ensure and help you to stand out of the crowd. Next slide, please. Now, what are the what are the twenty twenty? We are in a digital world. Now, uh, some additional uh, soft skills needed, I would say. creativity persuasion collaboration adaptability and emotional intelligence i would stress on emotional intelligence because what we saw with one of a bright mind 5 days back in mumbai was really bad i think you know you will have always vultures out there in a corporate life life to demean you to pull you down to ensure that your success is nothing but a spell your tarnish your image stay cool stay calm look at a larger objective and people would be there if you are, if you believe in yourself your content your experience your knowledge and your upbringing do not bow down and be humble and keep doing good work you should be very good learn emotional intelligence at very early stage of life because you know life is really really competitive and tough ahead i am not scaring you but just telling you that problems doesn't end or problem doesn't start when you start uh, your job they only keep piling up you should learn to handle and stay happy at the end of it then the top 10 hard skills for additional certification i just listing it blockchain this is a linkedin article a linkedin picture i liked it that's why i put it here blockchain cloud computing analytical reasoning artificial intelligence ux design all these are helpful even if you are in any field healthcare also if you know couple of tools from this they would be helpful for you to differentiate your knowledge set set from rest of the lot people who doesn't know but if you know this you have done some courses and you have a knowledge it will make you stand out of the remaining crowd next one now interview preparedness uh, the last section and then we are done we will open for uh, question answers next one you should have a very good cv now there are hundreds of templates for your cv uh, available um, on the google you just google it and so research it, search it and you'll get it so at a entry level if i am hiring you i would like to see you who you are a person about you about your education where, how did you how did you perform during your studies because you are not work my only way to believe is your educational performance how good a student you were did you participate any in a, any events as a leader any group activities that will show me your team skills and uh, you got some awards and all this is the only thing i would need to review i will get tons of cvs if i ask but if i have to see i will only see these four five parameters for a fresher and it clicks me oh he was a ipsf president he had done these events he was he had secured 75% marks every year and uh, he, i see his photo this is how he looks and this is there is this is where he stays and a uh, some goal about your life that i want to make my career uh, in the pharma industry or i want to be a clinical pharmacist retire so this is what shows that oh he has a planned career ladder and he has a vision for his life i need to hire him let me interview him a couple of friends rounds taken because cv is your face value interview would actually the validation of what you have written so interview is must but cv would open the door for interview if cv is bad or it is not reflecting what you have done then you will not be called for interview next one please so <clears throat> what is needed when you go for interview hmm? you prepare a nice resume follow the protocol of dressing analyze job description brush up with your in typical interview questions prepare for questions prepare common interview questions if you have answers good if you don't have ask a senior ask a mentor do company research just don't go blindly if you want to go to know what is but you don't know what know what this is doing how many therapeutic areas what is the new thing which they have in, invested money did they buy any company you should do a detailed research this will help you 
stand out from rest of the crowd and carry documents that i have forgotten i have already emailed you cv these answers are not good they don't look decent carry one copy of cv copies of your educational document for all interviews if needed take it out and show them so this says that how prepared you are and how serious you are for the job next one so <clears throat> i have already discussed but uh, some do's and don'ts dress properly do your homework ask questions every interviewer good interviewer would ask you do you have any questions for me ask sensible question and prepare these questions or go normally when you say you know 90% say sir sir i don't have any questions i have answered all the questions i would wait for next round don't say ask question ask about company ask about your career ladder so probably when you work under a mentor or if there is an internship happening and you have a good mentor there they will prepare you on this patience practice 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 for interview if you it's a first interview practice make it perfect you cannot be absolutely perfect but near perfect you should try to go don't act nervous fizzling fidgeting with your fingers hair clothes not needed it shows you are anxious don't ramble around don't ask about money what would be my package what would be my package your friend has got 40000 it could be a fluke or genuinely a package don't go and say no this is too less you do this is a first job they would say okay boss i'll get someone else thank you for coming and then you will be thrown out so first few years is pure learning there are enough life left for you to earn money first few years once you pass out just learn 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 because one education system gets over another education system for you which is real life opens up once you start working and forget to send once your interview is done even if you don't get selected do send a thank you note so they will remember you to call for next round if there is an opportunity popping up next one please you already know what are the job opportunities i have already discussed msls medical information pharmacovigilance publication planning scientific communication medical strategy promotional non promotional education health economic pharmac economics medical writing and clinical research or clinical development next pay packages discussed next slide final thoughts this is my last slide mostly uh applicable <clears throat> qualification don't stop don't say farm d is my last qualification if you have time if you have money fits into your career ladder do seek for additional courses you know for the education or certificates they will always help you additional courses if any compatible cv and bio sketch short cv you know long cv and a small powerpoint bio sketch should be always ready best use of search engines how to use job job search portal nokri monster times job if they are being used nowadays everybody is on linkedin you should be ethical uh, real honest and humble on linkedin anybody doing you know any kind of bullshitting gets identified and people remember them that this is a guy he is the nonsense creator industry connects connect with all the seniors your uh, you know farm d seniors or the industry seniors which are potential guys you don't have to go for a job anywhere there is a knowledge sharing happening there is a mentoring happening so connect with industry seniors right blend of attitude be humble be confident on what you know just don't be pompous that i am this i am that or just start comparing start humbly and you will have miles to go and reach success very soon and you know people would be happy seeing your success focused career plan and groom for long term plan just don't make five years i want to be a senior manager done have a 30 40 years plan i want to be retiring as a ceo of a company i want to be retiring as a president of a company and this is how i have planned my career thrive for experience and knowledge and not money hmm? kabil bano kamyabi jhak mar ke peeche bhagti hai that is the famous sentence of three idiots i always talk if you have capability money and designation would run behind you be capable and be wise and be knowledgeable with that note i will end my presentation and i will open the session for question answers thank you raham yogendra let's open it up are you guys there uh, yes sir we are there yeah
हेलो रहम कैन यू अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ या 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 फाइन फाइन थैंक यू थैंक यू ओ थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू फॉर योर एनर्जेटिक एंड स्टिमुलेटिंग स्पीच द व्यूअर्स आर इंटिग्रेटेड बाय योर प्रेजेंटेशन यू एक्सप्लेन क्लियरली अबाउट इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ बिल्डिंग रिलेशनशिप्स विद इंडस्ट्री स्टेक होल्डर्स योर कमेंट्स वर स्पेशली हेल्पफुल टू दोस हु आर इंटरेस्टेड इन डिजिटल इंटर्नशिप्स एंड टू दोस हु आर एंबिगुअस in career building as well many members were it is stand still in their progress on importance of soft skills and all and your talk seemed to provide much needed help your slides touched so many critical areas of career building and career ladder planning like medical affairs drug regulator drug regulatory msl qc and qa sales and marketing your view towards life really really touched us thanks for such motivational words the presentation will definitely have a long lasting impression on us and we look forward to implement your suggestions in future as we are done with presentation and will move on to question and answer slot sir for short period of time is that okay for you sir thank you sir am i audible yes you are audible yes so here is one question how can we know that companies are offering digital internships and where can we search them they, um, they are asking about how to connect them sir how to connect with them for digital internships and i i think what one can do you know there are few people like you know someone would voluntarily advertise it but you connect with people whom you know i think linkedin is the best platform one is you connect with your seniors that if it it all depends where you want to make your career like you cannot go and ask a chai wala i want to do an internship if he starts so you need to connect with right mentors like connect first with your teachers ask them sir i want to do an internship in this 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 one second connect with your industry friends like farmdi seniors and all sir i want to make my career here and tell me where can i get internship third you have strange connections like whom you don't know would be on linkedin connect with identify seniors and sir say can i do an internship with you a digital internship and i really want to work closely learn from you and uh, know and grow that is how now internships like two ways it happens like it could be completely free that you just work somebody would pay you stipends are there but in digital platform i really don't know whether but there would be companies which will pay i'll i'll say share all the scenarios there will be companies who would say don't we are not going to pay but you will have to do you will have to learn there will be companies who will say because you need to pay a nominal cost for doing an internship because we share a confidential information we want a seriousness that you come and you do it otherwise but normally it's seen that students don't take internship very seriously so they want to put a binding stake i have paid i have to work and i have to learn and i have to grow so every company every setup has a different kind of offering so when you join if it's a first time internship somebody is doing then you are being experimented but if you are a third fourth fifth tenth or 20th or 100th batch as the seniors have they learned from the internship and how have they grown and that's a you know testimonial for you to go and join so these are various means of connecting getting to know cost involved when you talk about internship very few companies would give you physical internship now because they don't want to expose you to covid-19 because they themselves are running the offices with 15 20% of the staff so they just don't want unnecessarily somebody coming and getting exposed or exposing them okay yes, sir. thank you sir thank you and one more question is as you explained clearly about the importance of digital internships and all are are there any standard or authenticated internships offered by any organizations sir <laughs> there is nothing like standard internship is just basically you work with a person it's it's not about any organization i have seen when i was in abbot we used to give internship and we just used to let them work with the lower most person and because they used to come and they need you need they needed it for academics so it's a certificate leke chale jana that you join on next day leave on a y day and go and you know that is how also it happens i suggest you you have to find a person who will groom you internship is just not a document remember this yes, that yes. i would have a certificate you can take any certificate from anybody just ask your friend who is working can you give me an internship certificate they'll give you like this the internship has to be a grilling one where you are working with a truly leader 
a, a true leader who will invest his or her time in you and ensure that you have learned from them and your whatever deliverables they have asked that they will ensure you learn at least 90% of that you have learned so before internship rahmatullah and after internship rahmatullah should be different at least 20 to 30% changes should have happened okay thank you one more question is sir is there any scope for pharmacy students in nuclear medicine <laughs> i have no idea i have no idea because i myself have got little bit of knowledge about nuclear medicines only in the government setup i have seen we are not in us or europe there is where there is a vast nuclear medicine activities are happening so probably you need to search people who are on t like you know brc in bombay or you know organizations like this private setup to my knowledge none is into nuclear medicine is purely in the government setup so if you want to go into nuclear medicine government setup you have to follow the government ads find out a senior person and ask them what kind of job opportunities come and uh, what are the exams to be given that is the only way you can get entry into any education or jobs of nuclear medicine yes, so we got one more question the Please. student is a m farm second year student is asking like is it better to do internship project in college or in industry i would always advise in an, in in a, in a college uh, sorry in an industry because college anyways we learn but if your college is sending you somewhere let me see everything is all about your passion that you should take it as a learning experience and not as a certificate to come out of college because when you really want to learn this will help you if you just want a certificate it will not help you certificate anybody will give you and uh, college sending you to an industry for internship and you genuinely doing it's helping but college within college you are working under the name of internship it may not because many departments have gone it would give you definitely an idea of what is in the books and what is happening in the hospital but when you do in industry where you are interested they with your passion with your commitment you will learn more and faster and here is a question from one of our teammates sir Student forum. His question is: Globally, Indian pharma companies are growing in terms of services, manufacture, etc. The current scenario in India is young pharma and entrepreneurs are very less. Then, what is your opinion on venture capitalism in Indian pharma sector? Is it required to bring young ideas to industry, sir? Yes, for sure. It is. It, center is already investing. See, states in south like Telangana and Andhra are really, really good. for if you have any ideas they have tech parks you approach them and they will fund your ideas so it's not a big deal you i don't know if you guys have read tata dratan tata during lockdown has funded an initiative with 6 crores it's a small time guy in bombay and he have funded it's not pharma anything you have innovative idea there are people to fund you you need to know if your idea is unique one you have a vision in idea it caters to some unmet need you have a society contribution out of it and you guarantee returns with your long term plans then anybody would invest in your money government as well as private sector you just i am an innovator i am an innovator i got a eureka idea you don't have a business plan on it you don't have roi plans you don't have a longevity you don't have you have not identify any unmet need i got a fantastic machine which will take me to moon would anybody be interested every day i am taking to moon and come back it's of no use is it a unmet need do you need to go to moon every day no i would rather want a lockdown to get over that i take a visit with my friends to a park with mask on that is my urgent need so you need to ensure that any innovation genuinely contributes with unmet need it has longevity it has quality it it ensures return on investment and it has a society benefit then you are here to stay why did paytm go big hit you know within one year paytm was 1000 crore company because there was a gap there was a gap and demonetization provided then opportunity and it picked up and it suddenly became listed it's a 1000 crore company read the stories about these thing they will give you an idea flipkart oyo uh, uber or or ola read these stories these are small time guys who have made their life bigger okay Sir, we got one more question. Do family pressure 
can get into medical medical navigation office sir without any experience in mnc i mean how come msl and mnc connected i don't know it's just an msl so, job i think you are asking about to to get into uh, to get a job like medical navigation office what should they complete the course just drop your cv at the door that's it if they are opening they will pick you up but you should be good as compared to your friends you know there's a big a good story that two friends are in the park they see a lion and one friend starts tying his shoes shoelaces and the other friend who's standing who starts laughing that why are you tying your shoelaces we are anyways going to get killed he said my race is not with the tiger but it's with you i have to run faster than you so it's the same simple formula you have to compete with your friends who are coming for any msl interview if you are good in interview skills you have good grades there you know about msl job role that what is to be done you have connected with some seniors and you have built a story you have all the more chance to get hired simple everybody is on the same plate to get hired when a fresher goes thank you sir so, uh, we'll wind up this session with a couple of questions sir if you permit me to do so go ahead please ram actually this is my personal question sir i have done some online certified courses from world health organization like antimicrobial stewardship operational planning and of covid 19 and all how far they going to help me in adding strength to my cv or what's your comment on this this is this is i i see lot of people have done it because yeah, yes, there's yes. no harm in it it's just a knowledge yeah. job wise i don't think so it will help you how can you contribute to a covid pandemic by having it's just a knowledge which you have are you going to work in a hospital with covid or are you going to be a frontline healthcare worker are you contributing on covid vaccine research are you yes, contributing yes. on covid medicine research i am not demotivating it's a knowledge knowledge stays with you but you would not be able to sell and encash that certificate because it's just a knowledge then yeah just thank you okay so uh, here is a question from research aspirant sir i want to do a phd in research but uh, i'm confused about the topic of phd please suggest me a topic for phd <laughs> <laughs> i don't know you know there are tons and millions of topic for research just pick up anything you like you are passionate about anything pharma research device research nutraceutical research pick up a smallest because phd stage you have to do from 3 years to 10 years as per institution grants you permissions you should have patience when you should a phd is always about patience and liking if you like a subject you will finish the phd faster if you don't like it will go till your son becomes 10 year old till the time you will keep completing and paying fees okay so it's all about your likings what you like to do where there is a general unmet need in you know contribute some way by doing your research okay there are multiple things happening during covid times now covid is here to stay for two plus years two years until vaccine and post that it will become endemic so you want to do some research do it in this when a whole, uh, whole mankind is being affected okay yes thank you so finally i would like to ask only one question um, what kind of jobs are offered i think you actually answered this question as well what kind of jobs are offered to pharma graduates in the industry apart from clinical research and pharmacology i already shared i think yes, just sir. follow the pharma tree and you will get to know you just need to be persistent ever learning humble honest and think uh about your career ladder what do you want to make just don't be a football of someone else's game they will keep kicking you okay so be the one who is playing on the front side with the, your own ball you are not a ball and you are the master of the game okay ram yes sir yes, thank you thank you sir in any other question just one request i do offer digital internship but i select them and then only i take it i don't randomly take people i am available on linkedin so if you want to connect please connect i am always there to help you out do not go i see lot of people spreading rumors and this and that so don't go connect keep positivity at all times connect with nice people spread positivity this is a time our country needs are to con- us to contribute you all youth have to drive it so i am not being philosophical learn good things connect with good people plan your career properly be humble let it go to that old gurukul era that you know everybody is leading the country from forefront 
country is pumping lot of money in healthcare find out good opportunities for you new initiative not only job but you know entrepreneurship you want to jump in form a group of people you have some ideas pump in money government will aid you and you could start your own venture you want to do job find out never keep negativity here we don't want sushant singh rajput more we want people to fight fight with the life and deliver and achieve more larger uh, dreams and targets in life okay i am always available on linkedin you connect with me do share rem you and your team your feedback sure sir get on link linkedin and let's connect and share and spread positivity stay safe during covid times i take covid trainings uh, almost 5000 plus people i have trained in last two months that what okay. prevention and safety one need to take you as kids i started the lecture i love all the students here. just be safe do not take any nasty steps during pandemic times going out without mask not carrying sanitizers just roaming around we were not dropped 40 year old i also was a youth everybody goes through adrenaline rush stay safe because your parents love you a lot and they would never want you to see getting infected by covid 19 okay best wishes to all of you so uh, so it's time for vote of thanks so if you bear us for 2 minutes a couple of minutes hello yes please go ahead ram yes yeah thank you so much sir it's it's the time for vote of thanks i deem it a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making this webinar such a resounding success i would like to thank our speaker dr sakaram garale for making excellent presentation and making it interesting and meaningful i would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to our mentors tv narayana sir president ipa and dr s vidya bhara sir chairperson ipa education division dr rao adlamudi as president commonwealth pharmacists association for gracing today's webinar session thank you sir i would like to express our profound gratitude to all the principals from various colleges across the india for their presence in this webinar i'm happy to express vote of thanks to our core team members of ipasf who have made this webinar a grand success i would like to thank the student coordinators of ipasf who always give their best for making a webinar super success we are also grateful to collaborators and organizations finally the wonderful students who have turned up in such great numbers not only from one state but also from different states and institutions across india thank you so much for your cooperation guys stay safe stay healthy Stay in touch with us for further updates by following us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Team IPS will always strive hard in every which way for the advancement of budding pharmacies and for the upliftment of pharmacy globally. Keep supporting us. Thank you. Good afternoon.